Welcome back to the show, everybody. Big stretch. It's Tuesday morning. Well, for the intro, it's Tuesday morning. I got a good day coming up today. It's always a good day coming up. I had a great podcast with Drew Canole, which you guys are tuning in for right now. Drew came on the show a couple of years ago, I think. It's really hard to track time these days, especially podcasting. I'll often get a guest and be like, yeah, it was like three months ago, right? And they're like, no, it was two and a half years ago. So I think Drew and I both recognize it's been a couple of years, but Drew is somebody that could easily come on quarterly. He's constantly getting into new things. Um, the co-founder of, of Organifi, one of our longest show sponsors, uh, knows his shit inside and out when it comes to health and wellness and has really transferred a lot of his former party boy, <laughs> have a good time, Ric Flair lifestyle to one of homesteading. And he's got a little girl on the way and an amazing partner. And he's shifted a lot of gears and settled down. And in many ways found himself in the same boat I'm in, uh, which is really cool. So we get to talk about fatherhood. We get to talk about uh, some, you know, rehash some of the, the the things that were troublesome in his childhood and how he's worked through that and is prepared to, to make sure that he teaches a different way going forward. We talk about the world at large. You know, how do you process all this shit going on and still stay dialed? How do you, you know, go down the dark hole and still find it in yourself to to create light and love and and move in a certain way through the world. And Drew's done a phenomenal job of that. You know, he and I have both been uh, uh, <laughs> we both have rabbit hold some dark shit, and uh, both of us have prepared for that in certain ways. You know, um, but that can be all consuming. You know, so I, I loved having this conversation with Drew. Uh, he's always got great insights. And he's trained with some really dope people. When I think of like lineages, you know, like jujitsu helped me to think that way. It's like, oh, who is your guy? Oh, who did you get his black belt from? How far does it go? Oh, cool, cool. So it was this guy, that guy, that guy, there's Helio. Okay, cool. You know, and you can kind of track that just because Brazilian jujitsu is so new in the grand scheme of martial arts. Um, but you can track that to certain groups, you know, like, oh, I, I did my apprenticeship, like uh, Dr. Dan Engel did his apprenticeship down on the Amazon. Who are you with? With the Shipibo? Oh, man, wow, cool. You know, and he trained at uh, Temple of the Way Light. I've heard of them. I, got a lot, I know a lot of people from there. You know, like there's there's little lineages you can track where you're like, this guy knows what the fuck he's doing. And the Toltec masters certainly uh, had a lineage of, of wisdom that they held and kept dear. Aubrey and I have been tracking them for many years. You guys have heard of them through Don Miguel Ruiz. And the Four Agreements, the Fifth Agreement, the Mastery of Love, and every other book that these guys have come up with. Uh, his son is now writing, Don Miguel Ruiz's son, and a phenomenal, phenomenal writer as well. And so they've really held this. And Drew had the opportunity to live by one of his mentors in Sedona. And so we, we talk more about that and, you know, really what, what, how he was guided, you know, in his apprenticeship and that, those experiences and how he utilizes that now for guidance. So lots of cool stuff in this episode. Um, without further ado, my brother, Drew. Drew Canoli, welcome back to the podcast, brother. Thank you, my man. It's good to be on this as always, brother. Good to connect. And uh, yeah, talking to your crew. This is great. Fuck yeah. We just got to run it back on your podcast. Uh, who was that? Uh, Monday? It was, it's weird. Just <laughs> our week ago. I, I, I'm so discombobulated timing wise. Yeah, time has been flying Two days by. ago. Isn't it nuts? It is absolutely crazy. Um, but yeah, loved, loved the conversation uh, we had. And that's, I think, my second time on your show. Your, it's your second time on this show. And uh, yeah, it, was, it was crazy when we were like, we should run it back. We were like, yeah. And it was like, it's been a few months, right? And it's been a fucking long ass time since we had been on each other's shows. Uh, there's a lot that's changed. You know, you used to be like Ric Flair, limousine riding, jet flying, son of a gun, <laughs> all the fun, all the, <laughs> the fun party stuff. You know, you, you done, obviously Organifi has been extremely successful as a company and a business. And, um, you know, you're a massive, massive part of that. And, uh, you've come to a point in your life, I think after the last few years where desires change and, uh, you know, where you're at mentally and on your soul's path and mission has changed. And now, you know, here in the updates, it's like, well, everything's changed now and anything that hasn't is about to change drastically. So it's really cool to find you in this space 
Uh, and we're both, you know, really walking similar paths with homesteading, uh, parenting, all this cool shit. So, Ty, let's start. Where, when did you decide to, you were in Sedona, you were in San Diego, you're kind of back and forth, and then you decided to kind of move out, out in the cuts. Talk about that and, uh, and what that's been like, and then we can dive into the, the awesome shit that awaits you as a father. Yeah, it's definitely been a process, brother. Um, you know, having a house in Sedona was great. I've always had gardens at the houses that I've had, but I, I really wanted to create kind of like a biodynamic sanctuary, five acres, hobby farm. When we first moved here, we had sheep and alpaca and we got about 85 chickens on the property and peacocks and all the things. And we really started growing a lot of our own food. The goal was to have 80, 90% of our food grown on the property. Uh, because like to you, we were kind of watching some of the big egg factories get blown up and everything happening in the world. And it's like, okay, what's going to happen with our food next? So for me, it's, I've always been an operator out of the causal realm. It's I'm responsible for absolutely everything. And when you become responsible for everything in your life, then you start to jump ahead of potential timelines that could bring you or your family down right? Or cause more destruction, chaos, that kind of stuff. So you're a warrior. You're at the bleeding edge of this too. Um, and it, I've always looked at my life like that. So finding the property, we drove all through Arizona, Utah, looking at other red states, quote unquote, Austin, Texas, which was all appealing. Uh, but we really settled on California because we have family here. And of course, Organifi is here too. So we're, we're in California still, uh, but we're in a community that's very much like Austin, where people share their raw milk, they share their eggs, they're all freedom fighters. Like it's it's happening out here too, all over the world. Even in California, when you don't think it's happening because you look at the politics or whatever is going on, and it's like, ah, she could, couldn't pay me to live in California anymore. But wherever wherever you live, there you are. You know, your consciousness creates your reality of exactly where you are, and and I'm living proof of that. Yeah, no doubt. That was something that was fairly mind blowing for me during the pandemic. I came out the only my first trip to California wasn't during lockdowns. It was right after things started to loosen up a bit. And I came out um, for Paul Check's 60th birthday up in Fallbrook. And I was hanging at Charvin's place down in Laguna and he brought me to a restaurant that had been maskless the entire time. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> You mean like 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 mid mid lockdown? These guys were tur- like telling people they couldn't eat there if they were wearing a mask. And he goes, exactly. They would turn people away at the door, like, hey, that's cool. If you want to make this decision, you're not eating here. And I was like, in fucking Southern California, it was mind blowing. Um, but yeah, there was there was the, the 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 sheriffs in Riverside County, San Diego County, a lot of different places went to bat for the people and said we're not going to enforce dictatorship. Uh, statutes that have nothing to do with health and wellness. And and it's everyone's own decision what they want to do with that. And it's not up to us to enforce that. And I thought that was brilliant. So it is really cool that you found a pocket of people like that. Um, You know, I got buddies in Northern, Northern New York, upstate New York, and, and same deal. You know, they're just surrounded by really smart people that know what time it is and, and they're not going to fucking bow down and say yes to all this shit. Yeah. You, and you create whatever you want to create consciously. So being in Sedona, it was very much like that. I didn't, we didn't, I think I wore masks like maybe twice during the whole pandemic. So, and you surround yourself by other people that think the same way as you and and being in California like this, it's been awesome. So I'm glad that you were able to find pockets with Shervine and, and obviously Paul check. I think Paul's like 30 minutes from our house. Super close. So cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. With the, um, with eggs, like, what are you guys looking forward to? I mean, it's something that, that as I've taken a, a deep dive into it, I almost had a full on panic attack thinking about the wealth of knowledge that exists just in regenerative agriculture, which is a lot on animal management. Then you look into biodynamics from Steiner and you're like, there's old timers that are just cracking the codes and, and, you know, people that have been immersed in this for 40, 50 fucking years. There's so much to grab and learn from. And at the same time, it can be daunting you know, and, and what do we plan? How do we utilize what we have? What what type of paints do we want to paint on this wonderful canvas that we have, you know, to to really make it our own and and uh and just enjoy what we're creating, you know, what how much did it come easily to you or was it a lot of effort in deciding what you guys wanted to put in the ground and what kind of animals to have? You know, we were fortunate enough to find a property that had a bunch of weddings. So they had a hundred weddings on this property before we moved here. 
And they were using a lot of the animals and stuff as, you know, just basically a show. So it was form over function. So as we moved in, we're more like, how can it be more functional over form? And we found uh, the guy that had been on the property for five years, who's like a seven foot tall gnome. Like this guy is like the garden wizard. He's the guy that like talks to animals. Um, his He's got like two sons that like have dreams about snakes when they appear on the property before they appear and where they are. And like, he comes and removes them. And like, he knows exactly everything that's going on. He talks to the root system and the soil system and then knows exactly what the soil needs in the exact moment. It's like a listening that this guy has and I'm, I'm tuning into his frequency. So I'm witnessing him and I'm getting the, I'm absorbing it, you know, and I'm, I'm slowing my mind down because I think the more we get in that chaotic state and we speed our mind up, the more we operate out our prefrontal cortex and the more limited we actually are. So I think there's this innate intelligence in the human body when we just stop and we listen and we get into the zero point field, if you want to call it that. Um, and then that allows you to really um, have euphoric trips. You know, you're not on mushrooms or any of the, the plant medicine, but you're just slowing time down and you're really communing. You're at one with nature. And it's absolutely radical, the types of information that you get and how well stuff grows, Right. My beloved and I were reading the book series, Anastasia. I don't know if you've read that. Your kids would love it. In a couple of years, they'll be over. Haven't heard of it. Like, yeah. And uh, so she's like this woman that lives in the woods and does all this crazy stuff with nature. It's really a documentary like type. I, hopefully they turn it into a movie, but she's taking seeds and putting them in her mouth before she put them into the, into the soil because it creates, you know, the exact medicine that your body needs. And we've been so cut off from how to plant, how to grow, how to listen, how to connect, um, that really following people around that do that and tuning into their wisdom has been our secret. And uh, it's amazing what we're growing here, man. Next time you're out, you got to come see some of the stuff. We're using electroculture as well. So a let's lot go. Of the, yeah. Yeah. You're going to dig it. It's, it's insane. That's so cool. Well, I'll be out. I don't know if you're going to be there at the end of the month, but I'm going out for Paul's 62nd birthday and I get in pretty early the day before it so I could pop up on that day. I'll, I'll text you after this and, and uh, coordinate so the exact dates and details and all that fun stuff. But 100%. I'd love to come hang and see everything. We just had Dr. Nathan Riley out at the house. I got his shirt holism on right now. Yeah. He stayed with us. He got um he got some ink done from from our tattoo girl Heidi. Oh uh, yeah, phenomenal yeah. Phenomenal yeah. work. Lucifer and Aramon just look fucking beautiful, man. And then yeah, just Rising Phoenix has the Christ in the middle. It's it's incredible what she did with him. But um he was here for a whole week, and I guess he's gonna come stay with you guys for a month coming up. You know, it's it's gonna be crazy when we're like, hey, we're bringing you know this holistic OBGYN guy in to help us with delivery, and my beloved's mother, you know, my mother in law is gonna be there, and then all of a sudden this guy that is, you know, quote unquote, a doctor rips his shirt off and he's got all this ink from head to toe. <laughs> but I absolutely love it. And I love Dr. Riley because he's such a, uh, he's such a brother, man, that guy. And we're excited to spend the month with him when our baby girl comes into the earth plane and just connect, have time as family. And I learned the way. You know, I'm a new dad. I don't have any kids. So listening to him and his stories of fatherhood and listening to your stories of fatherhood, I'm in absorption mode is where I am right now. And it's, it's a beautiful place to be. Yeah, it is a beautiful place. And I like that. It's a, you, the, what you're bringing to it is similar to what you're bringing to nature. You're not trying to overthink it and fucking plan all the details. You're just listening, you know, and, yeah. and in that absorption mode, you're able to take it in because you're witnessing it. And uh, it's less trying to figure it out, but as you listen and as you absorb it, you are figuring it out. So I think that that's an important piece. Um, a lot of people rack their heads, you know, right before they become parents. And it's like, what do I do? What is this? And, you know, it's all these old farts will tell you, get your sleep now, kiddo, get your sleep now. You got some <laughs> kind of fucking savings account for sleep or s sleep deposit box. Like, I'm pretty sure it doesn't work that way. But um <laughs> You know, it's so cool. It's funny, you know, for, for the main differences between Bear and Wolf are that, you know, they're five years apart and Bear's a boy and Wolf's a girl. But with that five-year gap and and the fact that she's a little girl, like she is just like, I'm fucking melted butter in her hands. You know, like I have- Game over for you. Um, 
such a softening just imme- immediately, you know, and we knew she was in there. I got a chance to talk to, to both our kids before, uh, we, before conception of them. And, and with Bear, that was only a couple months before we conceived. With Wolfie, it was four years before. It was a long time. She took her sweet-ass time coming. But in doing that, you know, like just if you had kids every five years, you'd be a way different dad to each one of them, you know? But I think it really does help um, for, for in your circumstance and, and, uh, and uncle doctor, as we call him, uncle doctor, Nathan Riley, you know, to have girls is just an awesome thing for a dad to just be like, ah, anything you want, sweetie, everything's fine. You know, there, it, it, uh, if you had it hard as a kid, there's less knee jerk reaction that where you're like, fuck man, I was my dad again, or fuck man. I, you know, like they, that just gets, it gets wiped away with girls. Like you, you could never even, it wouldn't even come up, you know, in that way. Like she could spit in my face and I'd just be like, oh, sweetie, are we upset? You know, or <laughs> if, my, if my son did that, I'd be like, all right, oh, whew, let me take a deep breath. Okay, okay, okay. All right, let's talk about this. You don't spit in people's faces, you know, like I'd have to, I'd have to settle myself. You know, I'd need some techniques there to, to, to find my center, whereas she could do anything. And it's like, it's just, she's fucking magic. There's nothing, nothing she can do wrong. Yeah, it's this pure, innocent love that she has. And it, she's your heart. You know, I'm already starting to experience that. Like, her mom is my heart. And I, I see her as that. Mm-hmm. And when, she, when I'm in my highest and she speaks to me, it's like God's speaking to me right now. How can I listen to this more intently? How can I show up with yeah. more intention and more love? And this little girl has uh, shown me things in dream time. You and I have talked about this. But on three separate occasions... She came to me at eight, 16, and I think probably when she was around 23. And then she had three different life experiences of potential timelines and how I've showed up in those timelines. And she was just dropping medicine on me in these dreams. And I woke up with tears in my eyes and I'm like, oh my God, I've been like this. You know, I really showed up this way. I need to change now before she comes to the earth plane. And then I'll, I'll use that time to change with her mom. Or, you know, try my hardest to change with her mom because I'm still learning and growing as a human being. Uh, but that's been super powerful. Listening. You said that you talked to your son and daughter both before they came here. And I think everyone has that ability to do it. It's just how can we really give ourselves the time and create a ceremony around it? Or in some instances do, you know, psilocybin or something like that to trigger it. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I, I first time with Bear it was with ayahuasca, and, and Tosh and I shared the same vision. And I'd read about this from wow. Jeremy Narby's book, "The DNA and the Cosmic Serpent," that you could have shared visions. And uh, we were pretty blown away. And then we we went back a month later to the Native American Reservation, the first place we worked with that medicine. Same vision, but now it's a boy, so it was realer. And both of us had it, and I went through a lot. Both both her and I went through our own trips with our own fathers. And then yeah. coming out of that, it, it had to do with, for me, it had to do with fatherhood and for her motherhood, but um, pretty mind blowing, you know? And then what was cool is, as I recognized that access point was open for me, you know, and thankfully from the plants and the plants are, I have a, uh, an amazing relationship with, but I realized that doorway is still open. And I actually had a really uh, beautiful experience with him just in a bathtub, dead sober with some Epsom salt. You know, mm-hmm. I, I fucking lit some candles. I got in the bath and it was so cool because I think it was like the week, the week uh, uh, we were going to determine, you know, to, just to double check on on uh, gender. It had been far enough along or whatever. And, and I knew it was a boy already because he told me, he's like, and that's another thing on the, all this on all this gender stuff, both my kids, two for two, you know, it's a coin flip, but two for two told me their names and their sex before they came here. So that it's, it, what it, were their it does raise an eyebrow in my mind. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, um, they, they, uh, you know, I was able to access him just in a bathtub and it was so cool seeing him. I just got to see him laugh and giggle, you know, and like those, those are the things where there's, there's beauty in life and there's beauty in nature. And, and it's, it's almost like the psychedelic report. Like you try to come back and explain it all and it just gets fucking lost. But, and it's certainly lost on people that haven't had altered states of consciousness. Like if you've, if you've been there, you've been there, you know, yeah. by any means, whether that's breath work, Kundalini, whatever the, 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 whatever the access point was, doesn't matter as much as if you've been there or not. If you haven't been there, trying to explain a trip report to somebody is like, what? <laughs> what? 100%. Sounds like a dream. Uh, you know, is that the, that's hallucination, right? That's not a real thing. I was like, well, but this is real, you know? So, um, 
I think uh, accessing that, like when, when you're a father to be or you are a father and you have these moments of making communion with your child on a level where you see them in the future before they've made it to that point and you can feel their joy and their laughter and it's permeating out of their fucking pores and their whole energetic field and you're soaking that in, like that's fucking sweetness. You can't, I mean, it's just, there's just very few things that can bring that in life, you know? And then having that in real time, like if I'm in a shit mood, the fastest way to cheer me up is to tickle my kids, period. Like there's (laughs) nothing that's gonna keep, I can't be in a shit mood if I'm tickling them and they're giggling. Like that sound, and their energy field permeating up as I start to fucking get them going and wind them up. Like, there's just nothing like that. There's, there's, and it, there's, there's no way to stay down when they're lifting like that. They're raising me with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful, brother. I, um, I've been sending my woman like baby videos and she's been sending me baby videos of them giggling. And we've just been going back and forth, having a blast. And uh, there is nothing like that than a, a children's laugh. And for, you know, five, six years ago, even before, you know, baby was on the way, I would hear kids giggling in the field. I'd just be sitting in the coffee shop and I just hear these little ones like giggling. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like little cherubs (laughs) floating around me, you know? And then when they decided to come, we've had a couple, um, sit like kind of very intentional ceremonies for baby at day 100 and stuff like that. Kind of like a Toltec thing. Right. And I'm sitting there in this ceremony. And my woman has her whole belly painted by all the other women that are there for a day 100 of baby. And it's this beautiful experience. But then I, I'm like out of my body and I look up over at our shed. You can kind of see it behind me a little bit. But I, I literally see this little girl sitting on the roof just giggling. Like, I'm about to come in here. You know, I'm about to show up. Planet Earth, like you guys better get ready. And uh, it's just beautiful to be in tune to those subtle energies like you had in the bathtub experience that are all around us all the time, but we're so inundated with the matrix that we forget how powerful we truly are in those moments. And and really that we're just giant antennas floating through time and space. And we can tune into that at any time we could have yet that euphoric moment and experience that at any time we want, as long as we're sensitive enough to that subtle energy. Absolutely, brother. Have you had anything, a lot of, you know, I had a great podcast with um, Mike Salemi, who you, I think, you know, um, was a a Czech practitioner, former kettlebell champ. Awesome guys. Yeah. Uh, Got a lot of mutual friends. Mike's a great guy. He he did a phenomenal podcast with um, Dr. Nathan Riley about being an upcoming father, you know, because he had a child on the way that they've delivered since then, him and his his wife, Lauren. And, um, you know, I'm just wondering, like, has, have, you've done so much self-work. You obviously had... You know, if anybody listened to this on their first podcast, probably as hard a childhood as, as anyone could fucking have. Yeah. And it's not a grading scale, but I'll say it. That's fucking, it's up, it's on par with anything you anyone has ever heard of in terms of challenge. Have you had anything come up for you since this this got locked in and you guys have a date and you know, like, all right, this is going to happen? Has has stuff started to to, to circle back to you in terms of, of your own childhood. Cause for me, when we got pregnant with bear, a lot of dad shit came up for me. And oh, then yeah. when we were pregnant with wolf, a lot of mom stuff came up for me and it was very interesting how it worked in that way. Yeah. But there was, there were clear distinction, you know, five years later, now I'm dealing with a ton of mom shit. And I'm like, why is this? And I was like, Oh, we're having a little girl. You know, I, a lot of that yeah. started coming up for me and I had the whole pregnancy to work through it, you know, and still after the fact, but, but really it was in, knowing we were having a little girl when I got to really work on that. Yeah, it is. Um, it's, it's ripped my heart open. I mean, I don't know if that's the estrogen from my woman being pregnant or what, but I mean, I'll literally be watching Finding Nemo and I'll just start crying for no, no reason, you know, or whatever it is. It's like, I'm much more emotional. I'm much more tuned in to my own heart. And I, I'm seeing the areas in my life where I haven't been kind to myself. So I'm developing more kindness and more love for me. And um, it's hard because when you're tortured as a, a kid, you know, we talked about my childhood, when you're tortured and you're not quote unquote lovable and you have this unconscious impression on your brain and you've lived the majority of your life as a piece of shit or garbage, you know, when they would use, they would slide my food outside when I, I was living under a deck for like two weeks in the rain as like a four-year-old, like just terrific, stu- like horrific stuff. Um, 
but, but I've healed most of that. And when the child, when I've learned that she's coming, it's like all my self-worth issues just popped right up. Like, am I worthy to be a dad? You know? And, and I think I've held her in my arms even before she's here and I just lose it because, um, I don't know how any human being could do the type of damage, the type of hatred, the type of physical abuse that happened to me when I look at this pure, innocent soul. And it just breaks me, dude. It just absolutely rips every cell in my body. Like just. So there's excitement. And also there's like, oh, well, we, we know we still have work to do. We know there's still healing. And that's the beautiful part about Earth School. So here we go. Yeah. Yeah, I thought uh, I've, I've done a, a lot of work with both parents, whether it be plant medicines or just, you know, yeah. these stages of, of childhood development and things like that. And um, I was talking with, with one of my coaches and I, I want to dive in, you know, because you got to move in right next to a Toltec master, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I, I, I found that very interesting and fascinating. Um, just the, the little bit I know about the Toltec through Dr. Will Tegel and of course, you know, Don Miguel Ruiz and people like that. But um, this idea, you know, of the infinite spiral staircase and that, you know, you, you have worked through something, but as you circle back around that spiral to revisit it, you're revisiting it as a different person. You know, it's kind of like no man crosses the same river twice because the man is not the same man and the river is not the same river. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, there's an opportunity there to see it with new eyes and to see it differently and perhaps grab more lessons and more medicine from those revisitations. So um, at first I was kind of like, what the fuck, dude? I thought I worked on all this shit. Like, why, <laughs> why is this coming back up? You know, I I spent a lot of time here. I don't want to fucking spend more time here, you know? And then I was like, well, am I different now? Yeah, I'm different now. All right. Well, how do I see this differently? Okay. All right. Let's revisit that, you know? And it always happens like that. It's you think you healed it and then something else comes up and triggers you just the same. And it's like, oh, there's still more to go. And relationship is the perfect container for growth. So there's so much. And that's why we see divorce rates, you know, skyrocketing and, people failing to commit long-term now because it's the hardest work we'll do is like relationship. Yeah. And yes, it's the most it's, rewarding. Uh, it for sure is the most reward. That's, that's it though. That's the stakes are highest and it's, you know, the hardest work and that's what makes it the most rewarding. If you, if you say yes to that, um, you're, you're, I've, I've been, it's funny. Dr. Will Tegel said, you know, you had your marriage, pre-children, you had your marriage with Barry, you had your marriage when you decided to open the marriage, you had your marriage with Wolf, you had your marriage now when you decided to close the marriage, you have all these different marriages with new agreements and they're really different marriages at different stages of your life. Um, I love that. I'm interested to see like, how, yeah, how, how you're unfolding shifts, you know, like all of the beauty that you have in this relationship now and how, how that's positively changed, knowing that you guys are both doing the work moving forward one of the greatest uh, th- helpers for us in the most hardest challenging time points of our relationship was um, I realized my, co- my communication skill set wasn't good enough and that I needed to improve that drastically. And I started rabbit holing nonviolent communication, a bunch of different books. Um, one of the books that we rabbit holed together was The Mastery of Love by Don Miguel Ruiz. Great book. And I'd read a couple paragraphs. She'd read a couple paragraphs out loud and we'd do one chapter and then we'd just discuss like, do mm-hmm. we agree with everything he's saying here? Uh, how far along are we? What can we do to improve to get up to, to yeah. what his standard is and according to this? And that was such a healing and awesome practice for us. I imagine you and your partner have some pretty fucking cool practices like that. That's something I just stumbled upon and decided, you know, do you want to do this? This seems like a good idea. And it was, holy shit, this is a great idea. Um, what type of practice do you have with your partner that are, uh, you know, on that, let's, let's move together, let's grow together, let's walk this path together? 100%. I, um, especially during pregnancy, one of the things we've been doing or at least trying to do every single day is just take a bath together and do breathing together. So slowing our breath down, really connecting in that way, because I find, and you, you probably experienced this too, but as men, you know, being the CEO of Organifi, I'm busy all day long. I'm in my masculine, I'm running around doing this, doing that. And the feminine is very, you know, very open and um, nurturing, but when the masculine comes in as forceful, it feels like violent communication. So for us, it's like, we have to really take a step back for me 
and just breathe with her in the bathtub. That really slows things down a little bit. And I've also realized that when I get going, I, I could go 12 hours with just head down and not know that anybody was even around me. I got like blinders on. And that feels, especially if you have a little girl on the way, she's going to feel like daddy doesn't even love her or pay attention to her. And she's going to feel so uh, not even seen, you know? And I think my woman now sometimes feels not seen because of the blinders that I have on when I'm working all day long. So it's really a call to tune into my own communication, slow down, check in, you know, every, even if it doesn't have to be timed out, but just when I see the little one or my beloved, just simply check in. It goes a long way. It's not, not like, hey, moving on, like really eye contact, hold their hands, tell her that you love her, you're safe, I love you, whatever it is that you say to her. And I think that goes so far because my woman really isn't looking for more, more of a provider. You know, I provide, but she's looking for that emotional safety, that connection, the oneness, you know, that we fell in love with in the first place. And she's my greatest teacher. She's a total master Jedi. I can't get away with anything at all. She, is so, <laughs> yeah. she has so much fire and it's like my ego will get tripped up sometimes. And it's like, no, I'm, I think I'm right. And at the end of the day, Drew Canoli is never right. Like there's a very <laughs> rare chance or possibility that I'm going to push something past her because she's already got my card. She sees right through me in every moment. You know, she'll ask me something and she already knows it. She's super psychic. She's intuitive. She's an oracle. She's connected to source and uh, just holds me high consistently. I told her about a business deal that I was in the middle of yesterday. And, uh, you know, she's, she's really crafty in, in how she spoke about it, but she was like, that's it. And I thought it was a huge deal. You know, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> and it's like the, it just, it's a call to do better and better and better as a man. And I'm open for it and I love it. Um, Another exercise we do is weekly, we try to go through physical, emotional, spiritual, mental, you know, like the the life wheel. Scale of one to 10, where are you? How can we make our relationship better? How can we make our sex life better? And I think if you don't track it, you can't count. So looking back three, four weeks of where we're coming and then last week, you know, maybe something happened where we got into an argument. So the relationship was a little bit lower. What can we do? You know, what's in the gap? So we're constantly growing together that way. And uh, that's been helpful. So those are some of the things we do, but it's, it's a ride, brother. No doubt. Yeah. Well, I mean, every, every, every relationship is a ride. If you, if you respect it as such and, and treat it as the, the awesome ride that it can be, and you show yeah. up for that, then it can be a, a good ride. But yeah, there's always going to be peaks and valleys and in rough terrain and all that shit. And I think there's so many, you, you, I think are already in the position of honoring your wife and honoring, you know, this, this amazing partner that you have. And you honor the fact that you guys get to bring life into the world. And that, that puts a certain field that you're able to hold them in, right. Mm -hmm. As priority and as something that's worth it. And a lot of people that I know, a lot of my buddies, you know, get pregnant and, and a lot of them are like, holy shit, dude, I didn't know. I didn't know it was going to be like this, you know, like, is are all, are all pregnant women crazy? And I'm like, most of the time, but that's normal. Yeah. Like, that's just, that's just a normal thing, dude. You just got to hold that. And, and, um, and, and how you hold that actually matters. You know, there's yeah. this, sometimes there's, you know, they think about, talk about nesting, like you got to change the room around and do certain things you need to look a certain way. And it's like, she's nesting with you. She's going to fucking push you to your edge yeah. just to see, can you hold that? Are you going to budge? Are you going to walk? Or are you going to fucking hold tight and hold her? You know, like that's a part of the nesting as well. And biologically, that's what a little girl's going to do to dad. Like she's going to come out and she's going to test me the same way mama's emotions are testing us throughout the pregnancy process. It's perfectly designed that way. So when I'm in the middle of a test and maybe emotions are a little bit high, whatever it is, maybe it feels like impatience or uh, a little angry about something that seems irrational to me, I put myself in her body and I'm like, wait a minute. Like, how does she really feel about Drew showing up this way? You know, from the causal level, what did I do to make her not feel safe in this moment? And how can I really witness myself from that level as the actor? You know, the director's beyond the actor. How can I put myself in the director's seat and have more compassion for the actor, but also change the script change the story about how I'm showing up to her so that next time maybe I, I don't 
mess it up. And I think our women, our oracles, like they just grow so much faster than most men. I think most men try to keep up with them, but they are just moving at light speed compared to most men. It's insane. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that, brother. So you guys, I mean, we touched on it briefly. Um, we talked about it quite a bit in our first podcast, but you have had access to a Toltec master and, and yeah. you know, uh, through, no, you know, no random act, you guys, you know, synchronized and you actually ended up getting a space right next to his yeah, uh, two, through, through a random, for, through a random walk-in, you know, at, I think uh, the juice spot. <laughs> so, so freaking cool. What, you know, in your preparation for fatherhood, has he had any advice? Has he given you any tools or anything in that regard? Because it seems to me that, that, um, you know, of all the things we learned from our indigenous elders, quite a bit of it, it really lands when it, when it pertains to the family, when it pertains to the tribe, when it pertains to how we create a sacred container to hold, you know, being a father. And it really landed for me with, with my first boxing coach, Wheatsy, and um, just a lot of the medicine that he's given me over the years and continues to, even now that he's passed on to the next plane, uh, that dude's always showing up in visions and, and, and guiding me. So I'm just wondering, has, has, has he had anything for you as you've entered this phase of your life? Yeah, the, the primary medium in which we communicate is through dream time. So I think in many ways, he probably helped assist baby girl coming into my field in dreams, you know, in the visions that I've had with her. Um, and I hear him laughing at me too in the field quite a bit when, you know, <laughs> when I'm just being a human and I'm, I'm stubborn or I'm doing something that maybe I shouldn't be doing or there's a better way. He'll enter into the field and I'll be like, okay, there he is. And I'm like, all right, I got you. So it gives me an opportunity to maybe change the timeline towards more favorability and showing up a better way. Um, but yeah, 15 years ago, um, one of the brothers in the Toltec family reached out and he said, hey, you're a dreamer. And I had been lucid dreaming since I was like five years old. So we were traveling together already as uh, you know, dream night school travelers, sitting in classrooms, learning stuff. I've been all over the cosmos, you know, for whatever that is, um, learning from these elders and these other beings. So it's, it's definitely prepared me. It's healed a lot of the trauma that I've had, tortured as a kid and throughout my life. Um, it's been super, super powerful. But I think the biggest thing that he's taught me is there's no other moment except for right now and how to get really slow, how to do hypervigilant meditation to where everything's a portal. And you have access to information that you would never have unless you're able to really slow down and rise above the, the physical 3D matrix and step into the causal plane of creation and then really start to observe reality through that. So we knew we were having a girl right away. Like it's a way of tuning in that I've learned from him a lot. Um, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of premonitions things that we've known, weird dates that have happened. You know, even her grandma passed away. She was 97 years old on the exact day that she got pregnant, tracking it back. And wow. then the hundred days after that, that we did the Toltec ceremony was actually my beloved's birthday, right? So crazy Whoa. synchronicities, crazy dates, and everything's just lined up. So yeah, I think slowing down and paying attention to the signs that pull you out. Like if you use matrix as an analogy, like when you start to be the causal creator of your own life, you see everything for what it is and you choose a different way. Like you and I chose the way of, in many cases, it's a lot harder growing your own food, creating a food forest, having all these trees, you know, you have 400 trees on your property. Like that's a lot harder than living in a condo building downtown, just living the the blue pill life or whatever it is, right? You're, you're becoming the creator of your own reality and the protector of your own family. So in many ways you're, you're choosing the red pill and becoming the one. And, um, that's powerful, brother. We need more people like that on the planet at this time. Well, I think there's definitely a, uh, there's a massive calling towards that. Uh, I had Joel Salatin on the podcast. We were co-speakers at an event that, that force of nature through what good shall I do? And, um, got to meet him for the first time. He said over one and a half million people have become homesteaders 
you know, and homesteading could be an acre, it could be five acres, could be 50, but they've become homesteaders in the last two years for a lot of the reasons we've been talking about on each other's podcasts, you know, and, 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 and all the good reasons, but what's that, what that's done, you know, there's a lot of people that are like, dude, you're batshit crazy. What are you going to do? Grow potatoes, you know, and they, you know, city (laughs) folks that are all like just fucking up in arms about their friends, leaving them. How are you going to get DoorDash? How are you going to get this, you know, thing brought to you? How are you going to get your fucking, your, 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 uh, Whole Foods cart, you know, Instacarted to your house? Like, oh, we're going to do it different, you know? And then what's cool is in follow-up discussions, people go out to the land, they see it and they're like, I actually want to do this too. Exactly. How, how can I, you know, start to wrap my head around that and really plan for that? And I think a lot of people are doing that, um, or, or planning to do that. And it's, it's been a really cool thing to see that shift in consciousness you know, like if this is what they're going to do with cities, if smart grid cities are going to be 1984 style with a, a camera on every fucking light and all the things that they're doing and, you know, they can have smart meters, give me less power uh, yeah. and less gas and donate that to my neighbor who's saying that, you know, towing the company line for the government and saying all the right things. If that's how they plan on managing that in the future, I don't need to live in a city, you know? And and the truth is it's not just running away from the problem, it's running to nature, it's running to the right thing. You know, it's running to a better sense of of wholeness with my surroundings and with the environment. You know, can mm-hmm. I live in right relation with the environment? Sure, I'm doing that right now on a tenth of an acre. Can I do it on 118 acres? Yeah. Does that make a difference? Fuck yeah. It makes a big difference. You know, having a red shoulder hawk as your neighbor and, <laughs> and keeping the coyotes at bay. Like those are that's that's a different neighborhood. You know, we got the the hundred acre woods. Um, it seems, it seems that they're, you know, it, and, I, and I've been thankful for this too. You know, fear, fear in many ways was a proponent for me to make some pretty serious decisions for our family. And, um, and in hindsight, I don't have a, a, a quarry with that. You know, I'd rather not live in fear, but I don't necessarily have a, a quarry with it with the fact that that was such a good catalyst. It lit a fire into my ass. But in these things that you're talking about, you're talking about synchronicities. You're talking about, you know, these, these dates that show up for you. You're talking about God speaking to you through all things and, and the potential to witness these higher planes of consciousness through various forms of altered states. When you experience that, it's kind of like the game's rigged for us in 100%. a way. Right? And yeah. it's almost like, oh man, I got kind of caught up there in, in guns and ammunition and shit like that. <laughs> and we, we talked about, I joked about that on your podcast. I certainly did. And then at the same time, it's like, even with all the all the shit, it doesn't take away from the shit that's happening in the world. It doesn't deny <laughs> um, the darkness, but it also shows like I've been guided every fucking step of the way. You've been guided every step of the way. 100%. And that that's an open line of communication, right? Mm-hmm. There's been this golden thread throughout each of our lives that have guided us, protected us, led us on the right path, brought the right people into our experience, opened up the right opportunities everywhere we go. It's like this favor that we have. And I believe, you know, we come to the free, freedom is like, I believe the free dome. I believe we're, I'm one of those weird guys that believes we're in this dome and uh, we come to experience freedom in that. So we can create whatever life path we want. If somebody tells you to do something, you don't have to do it. Like that's them telling you to do it. You're your own creator. You can create your own reality. You know, I'm not saying abuse that by any means. But uh, we have so much power that we just give away to others. And um, I've watched hum- humans do this for the longest time. And it's, it's, um, it's kind of sad, but also it's exciting to see the people that are waking up to it. Like, you know what? I don't have to listen to this. I'm going to create my own reality. Yeah, it's, it's, a hard, it's a hard test, but I think that's like, you know, the, in some ways, spirit pushing us out of the nest. Like, hey, you got to fly now. If you don't, you're not going to, you're just going to fucking fall and plummet, you know, but you can fly. I know you can fly. Here you go. I'm shoving you out of the fucking nest. Yeah. And you send, I believe we send, it's like a game, right? I believe we're in this giant game and we send ourselves challenges that show up in the way of business relationship, whatever it is. And it's our opportunity to take that and grow with it and then allow other people's to learn other people to learn from us too. And, um, I think when you live that way, it becomes fun. Like you said, 
It's not hard. It's easy. And yes, the actor in the game wants to go out every once in a while and buy a thousand rounds of ammo, whatever it is. Like, that's hilarious. <laughs> like, you can really sit back and laugh at yourself. I did the same thing for a couple nights, you know, where I just was late night ordering like bulletproof vests and, you know, all this safety gear and everything else for the next Armageddon to happen. And at the end of the day, did it happen? No. Could it happen one day? Absolutely. Will it? Probably not, you know? So it's like we have all this artificial fear, especially guys like you and I, where it's we um, for me. And I, I don't I listen to a little bit of your Peter Crone interview, too. But for us, it's like oh, that was a good one for me. Yeah. It's like safety. Right. I wasn't safe as a little boy. So now I want to create safety in my world. So everything I do is for safety. I pump a lot of uh, weight. I put muscle on this body. You've done the same thing. I mean, you're freaking jacked. Right. All in the name of safety. And at the end of the day, if it's if you're doing that out of fear, then there's a state of dis-ease. There's a state of uneasiness, right? So it's how can you and yeah. I, how can we really relax and just observe and then witness the actor from the director position and go through life with just so much more ease? Like that's what this is about. Absolutely, brother. Yeah, I'm happy you listen to that. I, I frequently circle back with Peter in my mind and We've been reaching out to each other more and more since then. And, and um, I love Peter. He's such a fucking fantastic dude. But listening to him go through, you know, his, his, his routine, for lack of a better you know, term, whereas he pulls people through this ceremony, he did it with Eric Godsey in front of all of Fit for Service. And I was just floored. And there was so much that landed for me in that. And I, we were supposed to podcast the next day. And I was like, we're going to do that. We're going to fucking do that. And it's going to be quite revealing. Yeah, it was, it was, it was important to do. Like there was just no, there was no other way. Not knowing, knowing, you know, I knew Peter before and I knew his potential, but I didn't know, you know, what that actually looked like going through Peter. And so getting to go through it and having it on the podcast, it's been, um, I've had more people reach out to me about that episode than any other episode by far, you know, just because of, of it's real. how, what, what little bits landed for them as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, um, and Peter's great too, but, you know, I can listen to him and, saying that shit and it'll land for me because he too doesn't deny the darkness. He too yeah. talks about the children getting fucking locked away. He talks about all the things that are going on and knows it's true and also knows that, that that's not everyone's experience, you know? And it doesn't mean we don't do anything about that or we stop talking about it. We don't right those wrongs. Um, but that's, that's not my experience, you know, and, and really just where the program comes from. Because like you said, the dis-ease portion how can I ever be in a state of peace and harmony with all that is if life itself is dangerous, if life itself is unsafe, if, if the, the game board itself is, is uh, negative, you know? And I think that's, that's a really, it's an important thing because I, I, I'm just working downstream with the core issues right back here the whole time. Like I can't figure and solve this shit out anywhere but at the core root of the issue, you know, and Peter did that for me in a, in a brilliant way. Yeah. It opens you up and then it literally transforms your life when you stop living with so much tension in your body. I believe all sickness is just tension. It's just psychological tension that your body holds. Your body's a human tuning fork. So of course the harmony that you're creating in reality, if the tuning fork is not aligned is going to be disharmony. And you're going to pr produce dis-ease in everything that you do. So what brings you back into harmony? You know, and it's clearing those things like the safety thing that you and I have had in the past and whatever else we can do to truly make great music. And that looks like bliss. It looks like a euphoric life. It looks like lots of laughter. Everything you do is fun. It's easy. It's peaceful. And sometimes we slip up and we get back pulled into the actor again where it's like, this, like, I don't want to deal with this, like whatever it is, but having the grace and mercy enough to keep pulling yourself back over time. And eventually you, you're going to live in this place of looking back at your life and wondering why it was so hard because it is meant to be so easy. We, we came here. I believe this is like a giant vacation for our souls. We just inhabited these vehicles to just have fun and connect with other like-minded souls on this, um, on this path. And I'm glad that you're on my path, brother, by the way. I love having these talks with you. This is awesome. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Have you had a chance to, to dive? I know Paul just released it, but Paul check just did his podcast, the five hour Q 
kitchen sink. Really, it's a um, it's a free class is what it is. It's a five hour yeah. expose on Lucifer, Araman, and Christ from Steiner. Have you had any any? Uh, I know I had Chervin on I, like two years ago, and he deep dove uh, uh, Steiner's understanding of Lucifer and Araman. Have you had a chance to listen to any of that, or have you ever looked into some of Steiner's work on those? I, I haven't read a lot of Steiner. I know Sherbeen's into that. And I know Czech just released that. I haven't watched it yet. Uh, but anytime I engage in conversations about this, I'm just deeply fascinated. And it's so, it's so presently clear that that's exactly what's going on. Yeah. And it's, I, I mean, I like it because I love the shit. No, I've, anything I've touched from Steiner, which has been a microdose uh, yeah. compared to, you know, There's the wealth so of knowledge that he possessed. But it's so much, but everything that I've come into contact with is like full body resonance, just like, like there's a buzz inside that's saying, yes, truth, truth, truth. Yeah. And, um, I find, I mean, I'll link to it in the show notes for people, but it's, I find it so spot on for the time that we're in and it, it, it paints a, a much clearer picture. It's not evil for the sake of evil. It's actually like a part of the design code of the matrix. And, and there, there are benefits to both of them, which is a wild fucking thing. If you grew up Christian to say there's a benefit to Lucifer or a benefit to Araman as a part of the, the matrix, like that's, that's blasphemy and that's utter shit, you know, like that'll get you kicked out of, out of church. But it's, it's um, to understand like, like God cannot make them, God's not going to make a mistake if there is a perfect, mm-hmm. a perfected being that's a part of creation and creates the whole thing. And I think, you know, if I'm looking on Twitter, it's really easy to see the shit in the world. If I'm looking out into nature, it's really easy to see the intelligent, beautiful design of the world. You know, so it's almost like where, where you know, which wolf do I feed, the black wolf or the white wolf? What am I putting my energy into? And and again, it's not, you know, getting Pollyannic and fucking sticking my head in the ground like an ostrich around the world's events and what's potentially lying ahead of us. That's why there is some degree of preparation and, you know, growing our own food and doing these things. Uh, but at the same time, I, I, I was just blown away by it. I absolutely love it. I highly recommend people check that out. And um, there does appear, you know, to be, there's, there's dark forces in the world. Let's just fucking say it, you know, like it's not necessarily some evil guy twisting his mu- mustache behind, uh, you know, the curtain in the Wizard of Oz. But there are people that don't have the best intentions and, and some people have the best intentions and think they're doing good. And it's really, you know, it's not good. You know, it's, it might be good in their mind, but, uh, you know, I'm sure Bill Gates thinks he's doing a good job. He's doing, he's doing what he's supposed to be doing in the world. I don't think he's, you know, willfully committing. Um, I don't think he's, I don't think in his mind he's doing a bad thing. You know, I think that, that, but if you pull yourself out of that lens and just say like, well, there are forces that exist that operate in and through every single one of us. And those forces can lead us astray. That that starts to make a lot more sense. Yeah, I agree. I think, um, you know, if you look at the Tibetan monk stuff, um, the the wheel of how we incarnate and why people, why certain people like Bill Gates choose to come in and have massive amounts of wealth and easy, an easy life. And basically it looks like their life is uh, destruction, chaos and, and murdering lots of people and all these other things. It's because he, he's just a really young soul, you know, the Tibetan monk stuff. It's like he hasn't had a lot of experience or a lot of time to really realize that he's going to play out that karma one day. Whether or not it's a hundred lifetimes from now or a thousand, eventually Bill Gates will have to come back and uh, be more human, more connected to nature. So a lot of the old souls are realizing this now in this lifetime and they're, you know, growing their own food and, and doing the human thing and connecting through community. And I think that is, um, it's because we, we had a lot of trials and tribulations as kids. We chose a hard path. And I think we're here to help humanity realize what's truly important on this planet. And that's, that's offensive to some of these quote unquote dark forces. Like they don't like that. They want complete control, utter domination in every aspect of your life. They literally want to plug you into uh, an electrical grid and upload your consciousness to you know, it's a long, it's a long rabbit hole, but it's, it's pretty dark when you get to the end of it, you know, it could be, Yeah. but that's not yeah. our reality. Like you said, our reticular activation system is creating a much different reality. And that looks like heaven on earth. That looks like bliss. That looks like love. And, and you and I are experiencing that every single day. So the more you and I tune into that, the more you and I are going to see of that. 
We won't, we won't have to go down the path of uh, the trials and the tribulations of what the world's throwing at us because we don't even pay attention to that. It's good to have some type of um, knowledge around it, but to get caught up in it, man, I've done enough of that where it's been two years of red pills and Tartarian empires and what's yep. really going on. And <laughs> at the end of the day, it's yeah. like, you know, you, if you stare into chaos enough, your life will become chaos. You got to pull yourself out. Absolutely. Absolutely, brother. Yeah, I think that there's, you know, there's been a couple of things that have really anchored me into the present and the beauty of all that is, you know, like really reviewing with with Peter, you know, like, why not, you know, let's try on just a different operating system. How about the universe is loving? And I'm like, yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah. And, um, you know, diving into that, I can that I can then see it. It's verified everywhere. It's verified through my wife. It's verified through my amazing kids. It's verified through just peak experiences, you know, going to Soltara with Aubrey Marcus and Aaron Rodgers and Dr. Dan Engel and a bunch of amazing fucking people, Naveen, and, um, and sharing, you know, with brothers an amazing ride together that had its, all of its challenges and all of its hardships and all of its sweetness as well, you know, and, and it's, it is the bliss of, of hysterical laughter. It's the ecstatic dance. It's the peak experience and expression mm-hmm. while we're at, you know, a festival. It's all those things that make it perfect. And I think that's, that's something that I can really lean on and, and hold in my heart as true. And that, you know, has been something I've been questioning since, you know, we Wolf came on 4th of July, 2020. Full moon. Couldn't have picked a more important date in my mind. You know what yeah, I'm saying? That's like, fucking like, that's, it's like, of course you did, you know? And that just, uh-huh. that, that just kind of put the anchor in the ground on, she knows she's coming here. She knows the timeline she's in right now. And she's here to fucking do good. You know, and I think for for people that are bringing kids into the world right now, that's an important piece to understand is that their old souls that are so wise have said, fuck yes, now we go. You know, it's not a holy shit, what world are we giving to our kids? It's like, let me fucking come in and wreck shop. You know, I'm going to make this right. Yeah, it's, uh, we need them. We need these souls on the planet now. It's exciting times, man. I got goosebumps thinking about it, how powerful these souls are that are coming into the earth plane. And I feel like everybody I know is pregnant right now too. Wow. So mother nature doesn't make mistakes. It's like mother nature knows there's going to be some type of an event coming. I've had visions of this stuff, of people leaving the earth plane in in large numbers for a while. But I think these advanced souls know it. It's like, hey, let's let's come now because it's the perfect time to balance out what's happening on, on earth. Nothing is an accident. Yeah, brother. <laughs> so what do you see? What what's what's obviously the most the biggest thing that's in your near future is this beautiful little girl that you guys are bringing in. Um, what do you envision being able to give to her as a father? What do you be? What do you envision in terms of how your life looks? You know, I, I always find it funny when somebody's like, you know, write on a piece of paper where you're at in five years. Like, I could have done that at any point in my life and never even been fucking close. It's just left turn, right turn, U turn. You know, like all different tracks have led me, and and it's just the listening and being present that brings me to the next phase of my life. But um, if you were to track where you want, you know, where's your North star and your compass pointing you in what direction? What does that look like for you and your family going forward? Yeah. I think for me, it's simple. It's how much love can I express to my woman so that this little girl witnesses just a divine union. And there's no doubt about it that, Hey, this is how the world is. Like there's so much love. There's so much joy so that her soul literally just melts and she's like, this is the way, this is the knowing, this is fully integrated in my body. My mom and dad have so much love for each other. It gives her confidence so that she can literally do whatever she wants in this life. Um, and it's just, yeah, how much love can I give to her mom in a way that's divinely masculine? Um, and then also second to that, it's just being the divine masculine man that's in touch with his feminine side too, so that she literally feels so much safety, so much support, so much love. Um, yeah. And, and I just, I could sit in that, you know, and you've had that as a dad. It's like you could literally, and I've have nephews and nieces and stuff. I could literally just watch all day long out of admiration and just stare into their eyes. Like, wow, this beautiful, multi-dimensional, you know, human is so 
powerful and just witness that. So for me, it's going to be a lot of just reflection and just witnessing the glory of this little, little girl growing up and taking advantage of every single moment, trying to probably slow time down a lot because kids go grow so fast. And before you know it, it's over. So just presence, just time and large, large amounts of love for mom so that she knows that she sees it, she feels it. And it creates a new way, like generational speaking, because I didn't have that. My parents were so disconnected. Yeah. I saw my parents, my mom and dad, my adopted parents, mind you, I saw them kiss like once in my whole life. Like Damn. there was just, it was so cold. And I don't want our baby girl to ever experience that, you know? Yeah. What about you, brother? That's a great question. I, I mean, that, I, I think that's something I've thought about often. Um, I've, I haven't been perfect in a relationship with Tosh. We've been, we've been together for 12 years now. And, um, but one thing we agreed upon very early, you know, if I think about the most damaging shit to me as a child, it was seeing my parents scream at each other yeah. and just wit being in the energy field of it. It was like, what the fuck? This is, everything's turmoil, you know? Yeah. Even if it wasn't directed at us, and that was that was harder than getting spanked or anything else. It was just fucking seeing them butt heads like two rams. And so for us, you know, it's important for kids to see conflict resolution. So if you yeah. are in an argument or things are getting a little heated, take the necessary steps to keep that from boiling over, but also allow them to see it complete itself, you know? And so that's been something we've really worked towards. And it's been great because... You know, I, I I don't think I have a history of name calling anybody. I didn't probably I probably didn't care enough to to, <laughs> to talk shit to a partner in the past. Yeah. But um, we we've never done that in a, at any point in our relationship. And I think the way that we communicate in front of our kids when there is conflict is so much better than I ever experienced. Like that's one gift right there. You know, and you, you to speak to what you were speaking to. You know, if you what you want for your children, like what I'd want for my daughter is that she finds. Um, the best possible man and uh, the divine masculine that is in touch with this feminine and, and has all of these pieces put together. How's she going to be attracted to that? She's going to witness it in dad mm -hmm. with mom. Yeah. That's exactly what she, she's going to soak it in. It's not going to come through language. It's not going to come through some novel about, you know, exactly. fucking Fabio on the cover. It's going to come from her feeling into that. What does this look like? And if it doesn't, then it's going to be her work to unpack why she keeps dating assholes. You know, like that's that's the unfortunate uh, uh, opposite end of that spectrum. So I think that's that's a beautiful thing. There's a beautiful thing in that because it, it really just shows like the mastery of myself and the mastery of my relationship with Tosh is the greatest gift that we can give to them as parents, especially in terms of who they seek from a relationship standpoint going forward. So I really appreciate that you said that. Um, and then, yeah, like that for me, it is just, where can I sprinkle in the micro dose of fun? Cause there's, there's times mm -hmm. where I've got my schedule of shit and the yeah. kids got to learn. And even though we're homeschooling, unschooling, really, uh, bears got violin with a tutor on Monday and jujitsu practice, different, all these different things going on, you know? So in the, in between of doing stuff, can we just chill? Can we have tickle time? Can I play ponies so with fun. wolf? Can I do any of the little things that they really <laughs> That's what they're going to remember. You know, you my favorite ponies. memories. <laughs> you better post that on my Instagram, favorite, bro. Yeah. Some of my favorite memories with my dad were when the Niners are in the fucking playoffs and I'm like watching the game and it's making me want to play football. So I'm like, dad, we play three, three flies up and Joe Montana's at, at the fucking helm. And he's like, absolutely. No hesitation. Takes us outside. Doesn't watch the game and throw three flies up for me and my buddies, you know, like, I love that as a, oh. like a, a, the remembrance. Anytime I wanted to play, he would play. Anytime I wanted to wrestle, he would wrestle. That's and so I, good. I think that you had a great dad. That's a, that's an important piece. Yeah. That I can bring fucking phenomenal. So, dad. It's so uncommon, man. Like to have a good dad and you're a great dad. So hats off to you, brother. I think this world just needs more good dads, period. Yeah, brother. No doubt. Have you seen the latest pandemic, uh, the great awakening? Not yet. I've been going back and forth with uh, one of the producers of it, though. They're doing another movie or, that you would be oh, very, cool. you would love. Um, I'll tell you. Yeah, I love script. Mickey Willis and what he's doing. But yeah, the uh, the third one is is incredible. And it's not, 
you know, Mickey does such a beautiful job of not making it doom and gloom. Like, he, you know, it, it is truly about the Great Awakening and it truly is about us understanding the full stakes of the game and then arm in arm, we rise together. And I, I found it just to be absolutely incredible. Um, I can't remember why I was bringing it up. So I'll, I think I'll just leave it there. But um, what, what, uh, where can people find you online? Where can people tune into you? You have your podcast. Yeah. You know, I was just on it. Tell people where they can meet you everywhere and, and stay connected to you, Drew. Yep. The Drew and You podcast. Um, and then Drew Cannoli on all the channels, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, all the things. And then also Organifi. So if you guys are interested in any of the stuff, you know, I, I love red juice and I know Kyle's a big fan of our red juice too. Is that your favorite one or do you like pure more? No, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what, I forgot to mention on your podcast, but I've, I've actually really, the red is something I used fucking multiple times a day. But uh, what I've really been getting into is the one that you guys did with the Mind Pump crew. Peak Power. It's like a pre-workout. Hydro- yeah, Peak Power is fucking awesome. Have you used um, it before your workouts? I've used it pre-workout. I've used it pre-podcast. I mean, it's it's uniquely something, you know, that, that it, and I say this about Organifi when I, when I read for you guys, like, you're not creating one thing. You're creating something that does many things. And you're yep. bringing in, you know, some of the best from Ayurvedic medicine and, and functional mushrooms. And the whole the kitchen sink is going to do way more than just one thing. And that, you know, I think the tagline on that is hydration, focus, energy, something something that effect, right? So it's great as a pre-workout. It's great pre-podcast. It's great pre-studying. If I got to read a lot and really hammer something that I got to yeah. deep dive before I have a podcast guest, it's phenomenal for all those things. So I, I've really, I like the, the, the multifaceted uses of that product that you guys came up with together because it's really good. And it tastes fucking phenomenal too. Yeah, Sal is, uh, he helped us formulate that. He's a wizard, man, that guy. Um, mm-hmm. Love the Mind Pump guys. But the BDNF that you get, the increase from the neurofactor that's in it is insane. They've done clinicals on the neurofactor and it's a 49% faster recovery. So if you think about that over a 30-day period, 49% faster in jujitsu, jujitsu, uh, pickleball, whatever you're into. I mean, I'll drink this stuff seven days in a row and already I start to feel it. So the peak power is wow. super, super powerful. I actually secretly, I want to combine peak power with red in a way that tastes great and then put it in a- That would be phenomenal. I'm, yeah. I'm doing that myself right now just because red is such a good pre-workout as well for the vasodilation and all the things, you know, like it's just been- Yeah, and rhodiola. And all, yeah, it's, yeah, red has rhodiola. It has- that's our the, literally the most expensive product to create because we use so many berries in that. Organic berries are expensive and it tastes so good. You get the nitric oxide lift from the beets. The cordyceps are in there too, which is a really great mushroom for stamina, increasing ATP, mitochondria. I've been drinking red two, three times a day in the summer. Um, it's the best. We make uh, red gel yeah, too. So the best. You can add a little uh, organic gelatin to that and have like a red fruit punch jello with all the superfoods. It's badass in the summer when it's real hot. Oh, Popsicle. I got to try that. That sounds incredible. Yeah, the kids would love it too. Yeah, fuck yeah. Well, I get demands every time I make myself a drink. Wolfie will be the first one right next to me. Daddy, make me a drink. Daddy, make me a drink. And I'm like, all right, but you got to finish it. <laughs> you know, she she's notorious for having uh, like probably three or four ounces of green juice and then whatever's left, I got to go pound it. But I don't mind getting the extras myself. Yeah, we have a kid's green coming, a kid's immunity. So when you and I were kids, we had orange juice, but it was all pasteurized and full of sugar, 50 grams of sugar in each thing. So this stuff, no sugar, elderberry, all the immune boosting superfoods in our orange juice, and then kid's green. So it won't have the ashwagandha, but it'll have a lot of other green superfoods that kids sometimes miss, which will be good. So cool, brother. Well, yeah. I love where your head's at. I love what you guys are doing. And and uh, yeah, that's a big piece of being a parent too, is how do I how do I give my kids something they're going to enjoy that that truly is a treat, but it has a net positive, you yeah. know, where it's not like, yeah, it's kind of good. It's gluten-free dog shit. Like, no, that's not good for you just because it's gluten-free. Like it's, we all want to put stuff in here that, that creates the super being you are, you know? And I think you guys have done such an excellent job making that hurdle much more achievable for parents to round out their diet and make sure their kids have everything they need. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. And thanks for having me on, man. This is awesome. Fuck yeah, brother. We'll do it again for sure. No doubt. And hopefully uh, it won't take as long in between as, as this last one did. Yeah, likewise. Beautiful, brother. Well, I love you, Drew. We'll chat soon. Love you too, my man.